She said you're a mummy's boy. Sophie and I had already had a small argument. One of the biggest arguments ever. Do you know what the strongest position is to be in if you are having a challenging conversation? Uh, open Naked. legs? Oh my God. Oh my God. I know what your life is Naked like. All right. <laughs> Hey, listen, uh, before we started the episode today, we had a little bit of an argument, but it doesn't matter because we're now here, we're all settled, we're all relaxed, and we have an amazing guest on today. Who's going to hopefully help with the argument. Who's going to help with the argument, yeah. They're going to help with it. So excited. So let's say them some nice things to each other before we start okay, the show. Say five things you're grateful for about me. Okay, I'm grateful for your hair. I'm grateful for... My hair? Yes. You don't like my hair? I do like it. Mm -mm. I really like it. You got me an Afghan hound. You look so time. like an Afghan hound right now. Yeah, that's not nice. Have you seen about KG Price and Peter all over TikTok? How, like, their reality show and how mean he is? You're in 10 years' time, people are going to clip this up and sh say how mean you are to me. I am like the nicest person in the world to you. An Afghan hound, you call me that every day. You do look like an Afghan. You what called me a I... fat little man the other day. I... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is way worse than calling you an Afghan hound. <laughs> an Afghan hound is a beautiful dog, but they do have long, long hands. Like I do. Can I can I also say this? I I know we talk about how weird we are as a couple, but we're doing something recently which is so bizarre that it's it's we talked about mating calls in the past. This is our thing that we're doing at the moment. Don't say what it is yet. So if I don't only, know. only reply to it. Okay, this is we do okay. this in the house down all the day street long. all day every. I do this. To, I'll go like this. I walk into the house and I'll go, girls, hey, boys, hey. <laughs> Did you it to me. She will reply. The real me. I Girls A! Boys A! And it has to be a shout. <laughs> and it's the way Jamie went, Girls A! It's the best thing in the entire world. And then we get more aggressive. Like, boys A! And then he'll go quick, Girls A! And if I don't say it, if, I, if you go, Boys A! And I don't reply, you go, Boys A! <laughs> boys A! <laughs> <laughs> it's my favorite thing we've done yeah it's my favorite thing. you know what i've been trying to get you on this tram for a while i've been saying boys hey to you for ages and you've just not been responding and finally you've like latched on and i love the girls hey i'm, I'm so, so excited well we're excited the snap it's snap pad padlock one two three snap padlock wish you were me I'm really excited because we have Paul Brunson on the episode today. Paul is a relationship guru. He has appeared on Celebs Go Dating as one of the coaches, relationship coaches. He's on the show today. And funny thing is, is we've had an argument. And I'm going to tell him that we had an argument. I can't wait. I'm going to say, gonna my wife is a real... Is it real what? I'm not going to say it. Go on, say it. No, I was... No. Say it with your chest. I don't want to say it with my chest. Say it with your chest. Have you got something you want to get off your chest? No, it's say it with your chest. What do you mean say it with your chest? Love Island, say it with your chest. <sighs> anyway, today's going to be a long episode, but a goodie. Are you ready for it? Boy, am I ready. Strap me down and call me Sally. Okay, Sally. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie's feeling sleepy, guys. He's got zero energy. No, we that's... We can all wonder why. Why? I know the reason to why. Why then? Because you watch Formula One until four in the morning and you game so much that your head's gone square. Your eyes have gone square. That is the biggest part of shit like I've ever heard. Do you remember your grandma would say that when you were younger? If you watch too much TV, your eyes will go square. No, I tell you what it is, is we spoke- Oh no, I, I know for a fact what it is. Sorry. I know for a fact what it You've is. You've had so much Botox oh that you're, it's frozen your head. And this is not <laughs> me being a bitch, guys. He actually has had so much Botox, despite me telling him that it has the reverse effect. When you have so much, when you don't need it, your muscles drop. They don't know how to work. That's why. I, I can't believe you're saying this, that you actually think this is the thing. Well, I think that it's getting you down because you don't like the effects I'm of it. Not you getting do, down. You don't like I, the Botox off. is not making me feel down. Are you well, I, like I don't have like. Well, it's a toxin. So okay, I don't have the Botox. I see. bet in That's... ten years' time they're going to work out that it's actually something to do with mental health. I think people are going to look back at this podcast and be like, "She was a bully. She was a bully. You... She was a bully." You, what do you do every dinner we go to? Every dinner we go to, what? Jamie just tries to like Is this... me. Huh? Every dinner, he just will get out. Everyone's talking about, you know, their sister's wedding, their summer plans. Jamie will go, ah, look what Sophie looks like, and get out a photo of an Afghan hound. And everyone feels a bit uncomfortable because they're like, okay. Is that why you got grumpy? No one laughs. Everyone's like, what? And then you're like, ah. And then she looked like an Afghan hand. I'm like, the joke was funny once. It was not really funny. The time. And the sixth time you do it, I did it, get better chance. Whoa. Okay. So this is why you were grumpy I last night. I wasn't grumpy, but I'm sick and tired of that chat. 
So hang on a second. I so, think just that you so should I know. build one another up. I don't think you should knock one another down. I only build you up. I'm telling you now, Katie hang, and Peter Price. Hang on a second. So Katie Price and Peter Andre. That's the sort of shit he would have done back So in the day. anyone listening to this has realised that, Sophie, you've come onto the episode, you say that I'm tired, that my head is full of Botox, my <laughs> eyes are square. And then because I said you looked a little bit like an Afghan hound, which is a lovely, sweet little dog, as a joke, you think I'm the one. Yeah, this is private. No. Privately say it to me and I piss myself laughing. But don't embarrass me at a dinner. Why does that embarrass you? Because I just, what what benefit is it? So people laugh at your joke at because, my expense. Because it's not a joke, you do. <laughs> you do, it's... In the sweetest way. I look like a golden retriever. Say that. You can say I look like Everyone a... just heard it. <laughs> it's an insult. It's an insult. It's, it's you not... try and make fun of me. And it's not funny. And no one's laughing. I just... I would... I just do what when they're listening to this. Just go into them to Google an Afghan well, out. what about if I have my hair tied up? Do I still look like one? Yes. You're going to give someone a complex. No, you did then. If well, you, okay, wait, honey, let's if you... just try and raise that eyebrow the same way you raise the left one. <laughs> just give it a go. Just raise that. So raise the one closest to me. Because it's like this at the minute. Because it's not been injected as much as your other ones which are like this it's a, it's a podcast they can't they yeah we're well, going to youtube because you want to see this because this is what jamie looks like every day and he keeps touching his nose and i'm like well you've clearly done something to your nose because you keep going oh what's what's been done it looks different this time and i said one time you're gonna go and it's too much do you know and what it's gonna go when do you know what you, when your hair's tied up you what you look like what an afghan hound with his hair tied up <laughs> I wouldn't laugh if I was you because it just accentuates it. Thank God BBC Radio is radio. That's all I want to say. Joking. Do you know what? Okay. Uh, it just looks like you've had a thread. It's so interesting. Sophie, leave me alone, please. This is you're being mean. I don't have any of that stuff. Do you know what? Do you, okay. The reason why I'm tired is I've said this on the episode before. I started doing EDMR. Which is like, it's it's a former, Trauma boy. Former, former therapy that someone said, you should go and do this because I enjoy therapy. I think it's a good thing to do. And it's where you follow, uh, you either hold these things in your hand, which vibrate, or you follow it with your eyes. And it's to, interesting enough, I've said this before, but it's called, it's to follow rapid eye movement, REM, which you get when you sleep. And so what happens is when you have REM, which is rapid eye movement, you process the day. If you've gone through things, whatever in life, which I really sort of haven't, but this therapist thought it'd be a good idea. Um, you get, you you basically teach your brain to process the stuff you might not have it's processed. It's like putting you in REM sleep. So deep sleep, you're sleeping, REM sleep is where you process things. Ever and since, whilst you're in REM sleep, you're like. Yeah, ever since I started that, I've been tired and my sex drive is zero. Okay. Well, it's, I'm just being honest with it. It is. I don't understand. I, I, I don't understand what that has Jamie happened. Jamie said that he looked went on porn <laughs> to try to to try and make me sympathise with him. He's like, I'm all right. I feel really weird. Like I've got no sex drive. I was like, Well, you do. Like a once a week is sweet by me. <laughs> and he was like, No, no, no. Something's really wrong. I don't even like porn. I was like, You've looked at porn. <laughs> Uh, and he was like, yeah, yeah, but I didn't enjoy it. I'm like, so you went on porn, tried to have a wang. No, I didn't. No, I like, didn't. And now every time you're like late to bed, I'm like, what the frig is he doing? No, I... Desperate, feverishly trying to wank <laughs> over someone on porn. <laughs> oh, but you can't. Poor you. Rank, little trauma boy. Trauma That's what I'm going to call you. Trauma boy. Botox boy or trauma boy. <laughs> JT, Jamie Trauma. <laughs> Not Justin Timberlake, Jamie Trauma. Anyway, I would love people to let me know if they've had EDMR and they also have lost their sex drive a little bit. Because normally I was like... no. Imagine them... it's just lost your sex drive because actually you just... No, it's too What, that I don't love you or fancy you or yeah. think you're hot anymore? Or you were like, just, just something else. Something what? else. Like, I don't know. I always get scared with these trauma things because I also have done a bit of EDMR. I don't have oh, the same. Oh, here we go. I don't have the same results as Jamie, but I'm very tired when I've done it. Anyway, I always think, yeah. imagine it uncovers something. Yeah. It's, what, are you, what are you saying? 
You think you think it's gonna uh, you you think it's gonna uncover that actually my sexual preference is men. That's no, what you think I, it is. No, I don't. I That's just what said, you imagine. Think it is. Imagine that happens because it'd be a real spanner is. for me. It would be. Hey. It would be a spanner for me. I'd have to you know rethink things. But I just think that that shit could happen. Like I read so much. I'm gay. I read so much about it. Right. Okay. And like you basically what happens with trauma is your brain tries to protect you so you don't you you basically uh, not think and you can't trauma. access things so there are periods of people's lives like there are periods of my life that i really can't remember yeah. much of and i just thought like imagine like you know the brain does wild things that is true that is not true. like you'd be traumatized to be gay but like <laughs> i don't know something like unlock something or even like you unlock something that happened to you i don't know what is it I'm listen. I no. It just the, this therapy has made me tired, and it's sort of changed it. But I think I'll come back. I think I, you know, I think You'll I'll bounce come straight back. I'm gonna you? bounce back, baby. Um, the other little bone I have to pick with you yeah. is um, S Sophie buys a lot of things from Amazon, and every I reckon <laughs> couple weeks I get a bling on my phone. <laughs> and it comes up Amazon UK, four hundred pounds have been spent. I then phone Sophie. I say, Sophie, have you spent? money on my Amazon His account. His card's logged onto my account <laughs> and I don't know how to change it, guys. Sue me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's fraud. You're stealing. I it's don't know why your card... It's fraud, it's you stealing. Know, you know when, You're stealing you know from when me. your card is on my account from? When? COVID. Last lockdown. All those years. <laughs> you used Amazon on my card since then? <laughs> you must have put it in when we wanted to buy it. Like, Are you joking? You've never changed it? I don't know how to. What do you mean you don't know how to? Okay, come on, look. It's for the house. A neck we don't pillow, have a house. It, a neck pillow's great because it's anti-wrinkle. You'll get a younger looking wife. Benefit. You benefit from it. Speaking of things that um, we've done to our face, Sophie injected salmon sperm into her eyes. This is no joke and it's bruised and one eye's puffy and I have so much makeup on to try and conceal it. Yeah. I, I honestly think if Sophie went to a facious and they said, I've just got some shit from a badger and I'm going to shove it into your yeah. forehead and it'll make your skin amazing. Sophie would be like, do it. Shove it into my head. So salmon sperm, it dissolves in your body within seven <laughs> weeks, seven <laughs> days, and then it like reproduces your own cells. I probably got that wrong, but I was wondering whether like salmon, salmon was going to start growing in <laughs> under my skin and like coming out my eyeballs. I did ask the question. What you I want to know is what pervert thought... started wanking off a salmon and thought, I'm going to rub this on my skin and my skin looks good. Like who decided that that was the right thing to do? He's the one you should be worrying about. Not me, just a poor little byproduct of it. Perfect. was wanking up his No, come on. You can't laugh that much. I don't have the energy within me. What is it meant to do to your skin? I don't know, but we'll wait and see. But I'm a little bit bruised from it. It's so, done nothing. You don't even know what it does. Yeah, it, it's, it makes your skin better. I don't know how. How does it, it does, make your skin it, better? It like reproduces your own cells. So it just makes you youthful. <laughs> All these little beauty hacks that's, that Sophie thinks mm. work. Sophie said to me, because we've been talking about fertility a lot and having babies, fertility, fertility and, and babies and all these different things, which we're really excited about talking about and we love sharing. Sophie said to me that she, w with the placenta, her placenta. This is obviously people know about this. Well, I had no clue. Sorry, you, you with the placenta, you want to you make the placenta into gummy bears and eat them. Yeah. I might just drink it on the day. <coughs> yeah, I'll just down it all in one. Can you tell the story of what happened with our friend? Yeah. So Set this up amazing. I Don't can't use names. Get it, uh, stories. Okay, so our friend gave birth and her friend, our other friend, came to the house. You, without the names, is already good. Okay, we'll say the names, fine. Okay, so Liv Bentley goes to Tiff's house. So Olivia Bentley from Made in Chelsea. She goes to Tiff's house. Tiff see, Watson's house. To see gorgeous baby Jude. She goes into the fridge, probably trying to get herself a dark Coke or whatever. Sees some gummy bears. Thinks, yum. Tiff goes, you just ate my placenta. 
Liv went in. It's just, if you know Liv bent me as well, it couldn't have been a funnier person. Like, Liv doing Not that. wanting to be seen because there's not that many. Yeah, what? it's just, oh God, I mean, little sweet treat. It's just Liv doing it to me. It was Tim Watson's placenta. That she got made into gummy bears so that she could eat them. It, to me, is the funniest thing ever. Oh, God, it kills me. Anywho, on that note, ladies and gentlemen, we... um. Do you know, an episode like this day is so perfect because we have obviously lots to get off of our chest in lots of different ways. And we have the relationship guru, Paul Brunson, coming on the show in a little bit. I'm so excited for it. What's going to be great is that hopefully gives it insight into your relationship, who's listening, other people, single relationships, lots of different things. And also, it's going to help us, honey. Mm. You ready for this? Boy, am I ready. Boy, girl, you better sing it. Boy, I'm sing it like you sing mean it. Sing it like you mean it. Sing it like you mean it. Boy, I'm ready. I'm a hold down. Texas. Hold down. Texas. Beyonce. Hold okay, come down. Pool. Welcome to the stage. It's Pool. Brunson. <laughs> Do it like it's. Can you intro, intro Paul Brunson like it's a boxing ring? Go. Coming in at 6 foot 55. <laughs> Weighing only 25 ounces, <laughs> it's Paul <laughs> Brunson. Not bad. That was very good. Welcome to the show, Paul. And he only weighs 25 ounces. <laughs> and he's six foot 55. <laughs> Paul, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, do you know, this podcast is about honesty. So um, before you came in, Sophie and I had already had not, a small argument. Quite a one of the biggest arguments ever. I feel like I really? need to say Ever? sorry. I'm going to say sorry to him because he's going to be cross with me for two days. You're okay. saying sorry? I'm saying sorry. I was in the wrong. Wow. No, because he does this thing, right? I get over what? arguments really quickly. So when I when I do, when I am in the wrong, I know, I'm know i like, oh God, I have to apologize because it's going to be two days before he forgives before me. He forgives. Oh, no. But you know what's interesting about that though is, so you said it's sorry. Like a backhanded sorry. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a backhanded you, you, sorry. You know what, all right, I, I, I got his Get back a little bit on that. Yeah, yeah. I, was like, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got, I got you back on this because, you know, sorries are great, they're great, but it's how you actually apologize is, is very important. So what are you sorry for? I'm sorry. Should because... we explain the concept? Con- okay, you can explain yeah. it. Yeah. No, really, we've ju- you're getting bombarded. No, we're no, really no. This is good. This is good. Hit me with it. This time. is a therapy. <laughs> set. Are you kidding me? This is what, what we're doing here. Okay. Yeah. okay, Paul, I'll give it to you. So we're we're looking to get a house. It's a big moment, and um, we having it. We're having an argument about the fact that I'm when it comes to using the right people, I I'm weak. At, I'm more of a people, so I worry about their feelings. So I don't want to say we can't use you, can't we use you, can't use you. And Sophie is much stronger. She's like, no, this is our future. You got to make a decision with it. Tell them to f off, and you got. Basically, you know, like with houses, you obviously you don't just go. <laughs> if the estate agents like it's X amount. You obviously don't believe them. James, like, <laughs> but that would upset their feelings. But it's their... a bigger, it's a bigger argument. The argument is she thinks I'm too nice sometimes. Yeah. And I'm like, are you kidding? And then what she does, Paul, what she does is I'll say, I'm sorry. I get it. That's my weakness. I apologize. But she keeps going out. No, She's because... like, yeah, but you're weak. And I'm like, <laughs> no. what do you want to get out I of me? I never yeah. call you weak, but you've, you did, you've you call done me weak. the same. So it'll happen. Jamie will go, you know, you're right. Like, she called me I a mummy's boy. You. She I said, you're a mummy's boy. He'll go, I listen to you, whatever. And then he'll be like, you know what? We'll sort it out. And then a week, I'll go, have you sorted it out? He's like, no, you know, I've been thinking about it. And like, we can't do that. So then next week he goes, you know, you're right. I'm like, I'll believe you when you do it. If you show me us. So then I have to take then, a then step to... back. So in this instance, did you call him a, a mommy's boy? Yeah. You did. Okay. So, so you name called. Thank yeah. you very much. Okay. I really name called this time. Okay. It's not nice. That's in, so are, is that what you're apologizing for or something else? No, I'm apologizing. I'm not apologizing for why I'm angry because I think I'm actually in the right, but the way I handled it okay. was not nice. Okay. So other than the name calling, how else did you handle it? Badly. Um, I was just cross. I should have just like been calm. I was just like annoyed and oh. name calling. So now, <laughs> how did you feel in the moment of that argument? Awful. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> no. Well, yes. I did. I did. I didn't feel good. I I felt. I didn't feel good. Angry. I felt angry, and I I've, I've learned with her that she she has these spikes of anger, and that and that's you know the only and but then she'll come down and she'll say sorry. So I've learned now to understand it like that. But all I said to Sophie was, Sophie, we all have weaknesses, 
But when you know it's a weakness where I may be too nice in certain situations, don't force it down me. I, I recognize that I'm sorry. Now let's move on. You don't have to keep going. But she still has oh, to get the point no, across. You go, we all have weaknesses. You have so many weaknesses. <laughs> and then he goes, what are you talking about? You've done nothing to get this house. I've done everything. See, this is a different story. This is a different okay. story. Because hey. you know what I was going to ask is, how do you believe you contributed to the argument? I uh, I contribute badly because what happens is I see she's going down this this she's getting herself in in a situation where I can see her anger spiking right mm -hmm. and so I'm like okay this is not gonna it's only gonna go one way so I'm gonna have to try and defuse the situation but okay. what I don't do I, but then I go okay maybe I just act really vulnerable here. And like weeks, so I'm like, oh, could you just, you're just mean. And, and so that makes her anger go even more. So actually I'm enforcing the anger to go higher. I should just say, no, let's no. move on. Who cares? It doesn't matter. We can sort it out another time, but I don't do that. But it, but you do care. I care so much. Right, so, so you would be lying to her and yeah. that's disrespectful. So there's a couple things that I've already observed, which you're I think is fascinating are you between the two of you. You're yeah, this is so interesting. No, 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 this, this is just, um, I think what's beautiful is that, so in a relationship, we always hear it's finance is the reason why we break up. Infidelity is the reason why we break up. The kids are the reason why we break up. All of that is nonsense. The reason why we break up, number one, is because we can't resolve conflict. Now, it's natural to have conflict. And it's good because when you resolve the conflict, what happens? You become stronger. But most mm -hmm. of us have never learned how to resolve it. And what's interesting is that even in this instance, you saying, I apologize, that was a very weak apology, right? That was very weak. Yeah. And <laughs> you, I, I, everyone heard that. Yeah, yes. Exactly. But, 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 but also, you did nothing to receive or affirm what she was saying. Because it was a shit apology. Yeah, but that was a very weak acceptance as well, <laughs> okay. right? So you both, you, both are, you both have liability in this. Yeah. So for a great apology, a great apology is to apologize specifically about what it was. So if you think it was the name calling, it's the name calling. If you feel it was deeper, then it's deeper. Whatever that the thing is, call the thing the thing and say, I apologize for this. And in particular, I apologize because of how it made you feel, right? Because you want to pinpoint the, the feeling that was caused as a result of the thing. Because does that then validate, so then it validates me because I know why, because then you're recognizing, yeah. your partner is recognizing what they've done wrong rather than just apologizing. Absolutely, and what you're showing is emotional intelligence. And that's ultimately what strengthens the relationship. So you're saying, I know how this made you feel and I'm not, and I don't want you to feel this way because I care about you right mm -hmm. so that's you saying that's the full apology and then you receive that you can accept that or you can deny it and then once you accept it that's it okay, okay. now i have another point though i recognize I your apology but i don't accept it just gonna put it out there okay so so, so <laughs> you gotta take this seriously i am taking you, you know, it seriously. So, seriously yes so, so now you, you you know what's interesting about this yeah. is that in the actual argument or the disagreement is the disagreement is typically never about the context, right? Or the content, should I say? It's not about the content. It's always, always about something deeper than that. And you started the story basically saying, hey, you know what I feel? You know what you feel? Yeah. You know what you really feel? Yeah. What do you feel? Well, what I really feel is that you can, Sophie, that you can get at me sometimes for things that actually don't, it doesn't really matter too much. Like. Uh, you do things wrong, I do things wrong, it doesn't matter, that's what happens in a relationship, but you don't need to get so angry about something that actually doesn't really matter. And for me, that's frustrating. I feel that you feel, <laughs> what that I you, think? it makes you feel, because you like to be really strong and he does everything and he's a solution guy. So if I feel sick, he's like, well, how do we make you feel better? Like, he's not like, oh, you feel, oh, go lie down. He's always fixing solutions so it's a real insult for you that i say you're being weak with this house situation and we still don't have a house <laughs> this may sound like a sport but i am also doing loads to get the house but he's just too nice and so you because you can't fix it or get a solution it really f attacks the core of you <laughs> But also, Paul, I can tell you this, is that I feel like I do a lot of things. And so if he doesn't recognize the lot of things, she just le recognizes the one thing that I do wrong. No, right. I Okay, so, 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 all right. This is the greatest day of my life. Esther Perel, 
who I love. Yeah. I love. She always talks about a oh, bit yeah, of research that, that she's identified, and I see it coming up in just this dialogue here, right. is that every argument is typically about one of three things, okay? It's either about trust, mm -hmm. or it's about respect, or it's about closeness. I would argue, mm. actually, before I even argue, what do you think that this re the real heart of your issue is? What is it from your side first? Mine is that I don't trust that you're gonna say what you're gonna do. Okay. Wow. Wait, is that what I'm saying? Yeah, say? that is it, no, that is I, it. I, well, no, but it's, it, I do in so, I obviously trust you implicitly, but with this, I don't, I don't trust that you often do what you say you're gonna do. All right, now, Jim, what's what's yours though? Because yours is not trust. No, I know it's not. Mine's not it? trust. My thing is, my thing is literally like mine is a mixture. I think between the other, two. I think a lot of respect. It's like, hang on a second, you're 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 giving me no respect here. You're just mm -hmm. throwing shade at me and not showing me any respect whatsoever. Well, here it comes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, here it comes right now. And the yeah. other is the closest. I want to. I I feel like that makes us be pushed away from each other. I'm like, hang on a second, we're a team. Let's let's be a team right now. Okay, so that's what I had picked up as well, is yeah. that I heard you and what you were saying ultimately is you feel like you're not being respected. Yes. That's ultimately what it is. So, so it's interesting. You feel as if you can't trust your partner to do certain things, mm. okay? That is the issue and respect is the issue. So it's not about the house. It's not about who's calling who. It's not about any of those things. The deeper issue is trust and respect and the beauty what? the beauty of that is now you can laser focus on the thing and it makes you more aware okay mm. so it's interesting he feels as if i don't respect him so how can i affirm him so that he feels more respected she doesn't feel like she can trust you fully right yeah how can i make her feel as if she can trust me so why don't you trust me <laughs> The hell? Come on, let's get into it. No, because you are you're, he's such a um excitable character and he's so you're so positive, right? So you you'll be like, Oh my god, that's great. We're gonna that's it, we're gonna move to New York and we'll get a house there. Yeah. And I've learned over time that a lot of the things he says are not true and they're oh, not wow. gonna happen. Oh wow. Which is great because you're so positive to be around, but it, then I don't believe that. False promises. But false promises. Yeah. A lot of false promises. A recipe promises. for disaster. It, it is. This is real deep. Yeah, this, yeah, this is, is great. This is, is but, not what we expected. Oh, and this is what I expected. <laughs> yeah. I was fully ready for this. <laughs> so, so, so one is I want to, and I'm, I'm not just saying this to say it, like I applaud the transparency mm. because what I know for sure is that couples who are not transparent are the ones that typically never work. They never work. But those who are transparent are basically saying, you know what, I'm going to be vulnerable because I want this to work. So, mm -hmm. so, and vulnerability is really unleashing your, your, your full self. So now we've already identified we have trust mm -hmm. and we have respect. Mm -hmm. So the question becomes, what, could you, what do you need to see in order to develop more trust? Action. Not just the words of saying, we'll do this, we'll do that, or this will happen, that will happen, or I'll do this. Just it being done. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, so, do, so do you hear that? Mm -hmm. I okay. hear that. Do you, I hear. do you receive that? Do you mm. agree? I deny it. No, okay. no, I don't. I, what okay. do I actually think? I actually, I, I think that you are looking at from a surface level point of view with stuff where actually there is so much more going on in the background that you choose to not, or you don't know about, maybe I don't get privy to you, but you don't understand that actually that is just one piece of the whole puzzle that's going on. And you need to understand that it's like a duck sitting on the water, that the legs are flapping underneath, but you're just seeing the duck who's still. That you know, analogy. <laughs> I do understand that there's loads of things that are done. You do so many things. But to, the, typically to like the, the, the major things are a lot of chat. <laughs> Like you nail everything, tick, tick, tick. And then when it's time to actually do it, mm -hmm. it doesn't get done. Cause it's like, you are you don't like to commit to things, I don't think. But I don't know why I'm using so many analogies, Sable, but if you're making a cake, right? Yeah. And you're, you're making this cake and you're putting all the effort into making a cake and then you, you, you bake the cake and you miss the raisins or you miss the icing. That doesn't mean that you haven't, you're not trying at the same time. No, you are trying. Yeah, but, but that your, your, your anger makes me think that it's just like, ah, oh, you know, whatever. Yeah. 
Okay. So, so this is interesting, is that right there, what you did is you introduced a new element in the discussion because we're just talking about trust. Yeah. But the moment that you said your anger, now we're on another track. Yeah. And this is something very important in communication that couples do all the time, is you could be talking about one thing and then in defense, because I could tell you feel a certain way about this. Uh -huh. I see your hands. I, I see yeah. your demeanor is different now than it was when I first walked in. So I know this is touching. This is touching. Yes. But when it's touching, we tend to try to defend. And when we defend, that's when it's, oh, it's your anger. It's a deflection. So instead, try in these conversations to just stay on the one topic. And then we'll move on to another. Mm -hmm. So right now, it's just about what can you do? But there's more. To, oh yeah, there's always more. There's more. But what do you think you can do to endear more trust? Because I hear the blueprint being laid out and I hear that you know that you are trying, but it sounds like to me that the challenge is not in the try, it's in the result. You okay. are so right. And what I can do is I can prepare you for certain things rather than prepare you saying, right, not just when we get to a certain point to say, oh, that's that hasn't worked or this and So basically say, we're going to get it and then tell you when it hasn't worked. Pre-prepare you with things. Say, look, this might not be the right one. This might not work for this reason. This might, so prepare you the whole, so take you on the whole journey, communicate with you, which is so right. And also, you're so right, actually action things. If I'm going to say I'm going to do something, do it. I would love that. Okay, you would love that. All right, so now let's do this. Your issue is trust, right? Mm. So now say all of that, but summarize that in terms of, okay, so here's what I can do. And it's always you acknowledge, so it's, I hear you. Yeah. Trust is your issue. And then assign what the emotion is. The fact that she doesn't trust you, how is she, what was her emotion or feeling? Uh -huh. Say that, that's number two. And then what are you gonna do about it? I understand that you don't trust me because I sometimes make false promises towards you and then I don't deliver on what I say I'm going to do. That makes you feel uneasy in life sometimes because you want to have a clear plan, a clear road, a clear map of what we're doing, what's happening. And if I don't create that and I give you false promises, it gives you sort of false ideas of what's going on and you like to be in control in lots of different things. And I promise you from now on, when I say I'm going to do something, I will action and make it happen. If I find and if I realize I'm not doing it, I will then before it hasn't happened, I'll say, by the way, this is not happening for these reasons. Great. That would be amazing. This. All right. How that much was do beautiful. we owe you, Paul? Because honestly, <laughs> no, no, no. honestly see, that, this is unbelievable. But that was see, that was beautiful. That you was amazing. You received it. And what he said is what you want. Yeah. Right. That was beautiful. And that was well done. That was well done. Well okay, done. Hold on, hang on, how's this no. all turned? Sorry, it's all turned on me. No. I was the one being bullied. I was the one being bullied. Well, but I need to ask you, because... No, it's Matt, my turn now. No, I hold on, no, no, hold on one second. I just want to say this. I want to say one thing. Because cool, this, right, this is a, just a pure example of who you are, what you're like, what you understand. And you have this innate understanding of individuals. And what you do so well is that you'll walk into a room, you'll see someone, and you'll immediately find something to connect with them. So with me, it was my Yankees baseball hat. Yes. So it's me you have conversation. Yes. With you and you did his trousers. Yes. You straight away. Which I'm going to get those trousers. Yeah, but that's sure. what you yeah. do. And, and, <laughs> uh, and this is what I do. And I do it subconsciously. Maybe you do it subconsciously as well. We probably do. But you find something to connect with someone straight away. Yes. But where did you learn all this? You know what? Mm. I've lived all over the States. My father was an entrepreneur. And he was in a company. He would like start a company. Uh, many successes, mm. some failures, mm. but because of that, we would have to move. So being young yeah. and having to move to those different environments, you have to very quickly figure out how to communicate. communicate. Otherwise, you're the kid who is sitting at the table by themselves. So I had to- Survival. Surv it is, it is, it's survival. So I had to very quickly learn how to connect, especially I was a black child moving to you, Salt Lake City, Utah, where we used to play count the black people game of Salt Lake City. And never, ever have I passed one hand in, in this game. Like never, we were driving around Salt Lake City. I'm like, oh my God, what are you doing? You know? So the fact that there were these obvious differences yeah. made me have to think harder on how to connect. So that's, that's I think that's where it came from. Okay, so in, and this is my name, but are you in a, rela you're in a relationship, right? Yes. So you're in a relationship, so how do you communicate with your partner? 
I try not to be clinical. Yeah, because that would be hard, right? Very hard because it's like going into an argument. I'm like, okay, I know the structure of here's what I should say, here's how I affirm you, here's what I should do, here's how I should sit. Even seating is very important, you know, contextually in in, in a in a in a disagreement. Give it a so I want yeah, everything. Really I want everything. Helps everything. It. So, so th this is going to sound wild, but do you know what the strongest position is to be in if you are having a challenging conversation naked. with your partner? You so know naked. what it is? You're close. <laughs> it's not naked, but you're close. What's your guess? Um, uh, open legs. Well, oh not, not open legs. So don't cross your legs. Not open. Naked and open legs. Oh, oh my God. I know what your life naked is like. Right. It's like... <laughs> Killing it all Open way. legs and naked. It's the best... <laughs> <laughs> I meant not cross. Not cross legs. Okay. Not cross. Oh you guys have. I see you have a great relationship. It's great. You know what it is. The reason why I say it's closest. Yeah. It is laying down on your backs side by side. Why? Because you're completely diffused. Because if you are, you know, the most confrontational position is directly squared off directly. So. Why, so, so you think about that. If you have an issue, standing right in front of your partner, it could be felt as confrontational. Because it's like you're about to fight. Absolutely, that's where it comes from. So laying down on your backs, but talking, it's, it, it, it is the least confrontational position because you're completely diffused. You're vulnerable. You're I vulnerable. love yeah. that. Yeah. 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 Off we go on the floor. But that is that is such because I always heard that if you if you're on a uh, first date you should typically sit side by side. Yes. So like Wagga Mamas would be like, like, <laughs> like, like you should sit side by side, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, stronger connection. Absolutely. There, there are many things that you could do. So one of the things I did is I studied body language under Janine Driver. Oh my God. Who, How long do you have? Do you have a day? Because I want oh to sit God, with you for a day. So, <laughs> so the, the, the body language is, so Janine Driver, she uh, worked for the CIA. Yeah. And she's the person who basically would do a lot of the interrogations. And she'd have to very quickly assess someone's body language. And, and so I did it because I was doing a lot of, uh, you know, date coaching. The, the, the number one concept that I learned was called BBR. Mm -hmm. The belly button rule, right? So have you heard about this? No. Oh my God. The belly I'm button fascinated. rule. The belly button is a game changer. It's a game changer. Okay. So the belly button rule states that typically, typically, wherever our belly button is pointed is where our intention lies. Now think about this. Okay. Here's how you can apply it. If I were like, if I walked into this room mm -hmm. and I didn't know anyone in the room mm -hmm. and everyone is talking in this room, I guarantee you whoever's considered to be the most senior or the most powerful person in this room, most of the belly buttons will unconsciously, you will be pointed towards whoever that person is or those groups of people. Yes. So I guarantee you, right? You two are the talent here, right? We have the team is over here, right? Off camera. I guarantee you that if when I walked in, right, most of the belly buttons will be pointed towards you too. But if I didn't know you, who you were, and I walked in, and I already saw that the, <gasps> most of the room is pointed towards you, I know the you are the most powerful people in the room. What? And I even know how to, there's even a way to usurp that power, right? Because the moment that I stand next to you, already, I have already gained some of the power. Because they're now turning at you. It, cause, cause, Whoa. Cause, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's like, there's so many things you could do no, with this. No, please tell me all. Oh my God. Oh, right, I mean, if you're, you're, this if, is if, unbelievable. It, it is. If, 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 you're talk, if you're talking to someone, yeah. right, you're having a conversation, yeah. and all of a sudden you see that, you know, maybe they're, you know, they're, they're listening to you. But like, if you're, if, you're, if, if you're interviewing me and I'm, I'm talking to you like this, right? I'm literally like this, okay? Mm. But I'm talking to you guys. I have no intention, I have no interest in the conversation. Um, my belly button's already, even though my head is in, right? My feet are kind of turned towards you, but my belly button is out here. It means I have no real interest in what's happening. So the belly button, the moment that you look at- <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Talking about the belly button, right? Yeah, it, but, but no, you've already been giving me good BBR. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. I see yeah. it already, it's good. I appreciate all okay, the BBR good. love. Okay, yeah. good. Um, but, that is a great indicator. It, and, and body language is not always 100%, but it's fairly accurate. It's fairly accurate. Wait, okay, okay, okay. If it, okay, uh, f okay, first date. 
Yes. Right, you're going for a first date, and you you want to be, give a good impression, body language, everything. You 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 like this person, um, you fancy them. How do you straight away? What are impressions? What do you need to do in order to give yourself that real chance to make it successful? Okay, the, the number one thing this sounds. I just need to know about su- dating su- if anything goes wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I see why you don't trust him. Uh, now this makes sense. You see that? <laughs> I get it. Now I get it. Totally. Um, no, the number one thing, quite honestly, is to have strong, this sounds super nerdy, but to have strong well-being before you go into your date. And this is the reason why it's so important is because your well-being is everything. And I'm not just talking about loving yourself or high self-esteem. I'm talking about full well-being. If you have high well-being, you will be a deterrent to narcissists, to psychopaths, wow. to all of what's called the dark tetrad, the wow. bad people. Why? Because a narcissist or a psychopath, they want to use you. So who's the easiest person to use? The you're vulnerable. vulnerable. So, or no, no, not just vulnerable. Someone with low well-being. Low self-esteem in certain ways, right? Yeah. If, exactly. Now remember, well-being is inclusive of self-esteem. Yeah. So, so, so there's a woman named Dr. Carol Riff. She's created what's called the six dimensions of psychological well-being. It's this long, crazy scale. But she studied all the greats in terms of there's there's lots of theologians who have focused on well-being. She took all of she took all of their theories and put them into one and said, if you are fami- if if you are moving slightly up in each one of these six categories, you have good well-being. Self-esteem, a lot of people talk about self-esteem. Mm. Self-acceptance is part of her six dimensions. Self-acceptance is greater than self-esteem. Or, or Because self-esteem is more so, you know what? I like who I am. Yeah, right? you're right. But self-acceptance is, I know my demons and I still like who I yeah. am. Yeah. It's deeper. So well-being is the number one thing that you could do. Because if you go in with high well-being, you tolerate less nonsense. You're better able to determine if someone fits in your life because your life, because you 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 like your life, so you don't want crap in your life. That is the greatest answer you could have given. Oh, that man, is just fantastic. What was your question? I wanted to know about eye contact. Yes. Because sometimes I feel like I stare too much. Like I can, I have no issue with staring someone. Like, like who? I no. Like <laughs> when I'm talking to people, I think in my head. I need to look away because I'm making them feel uncomfortable. <laughs> okay, so what makes... Does that you... mean I'm a narcissist? Oh, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> I then read somewhere... No. A like, narcissist they... wouldn't question whether a they're a narcissist. A narcissist don't blink. And I was like, I, st- I find it really easy to st- like look people in the eye. Okay, so... so now what... I don't. <laughs> well, 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 all right, a couple things here. One thing is, you said something that I think um, is really needs to be unpacked. And mm-hmm. that is, is that we hear a lot of these behaviors that a narcissist or a psychopath, and it's called the dark tetrad, right? Mm. So, and let's let's break it down. It is a narcissist is part yeah. of the dark tetrad. And, and a narcissist is, you know what a narcissist is? No. Well, someone, so a narcissist is someone who um, believes that they are above all the one, they, they just, they believe that they have no faults, that they don't understand empathy, they don't really understand that it's more so, so you tell me what it is. No, 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 you're, you're on it. But the reason why I ask is because right now I think it's a buzzword. You're right. Everyone's like, yeah. you're a narcissist, you're, oh, it's, uh, you know, you're, you're gaslighting me. Yeah. It's like, yeah. are you really though? Is it really? So narcissism is actually a scale. Every human being has narcissistic traits. Every human being does. The question is, is have you crossed into the zone where you are considered what is, what is called a full-blown narcissist? Now, if you are a full-blown narcissist, you'll always be a narcissist. One of my best friends is the top narcissism psychologist in the world. She's right here, Dr. Angela Smith. Wow. And yeah, she's, she, is, she is one of my closest friends. Wow. And she always tells me that if you, if you are dating or you're seeing someone who's a narcissist, their behavior can be managed, but they'll never stop being a narcissist. Now, what is a narcissist? A narcissist is someone who wants to use everyone and everything around them to their benefit. To their benefit, right. That's the point of the narcissist. So if you're in a, a relationship with a narcissist, they inevitably just want to use you. Now, is one characteristic someone who doesn't, uh, you know, who stares a little bit? Yeah, it, it, some people will say that could be, but that doesn't make you 
the narcissist, right? What makes you a narcissist, A, I could test you for it if you want me to. Yeah, yeah. okay, please. I, no, 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 I, I, no, no, no. I need you to actually fill out. Oh, a, right. It's a psychological so gonna, test. You told me on this podcast. I was like, Jesus. Imagine Tom Scout's a You are a narcissist. narcissist. <laughs> and you are a psychopath. Yeah, you two yeah, are yeah, perfect yeah. together. And we're going to go, and go on the road like killing people. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! But but uh, so so that could be considered. But a, a psychopath also stares. Um, psychopath, you Great. know, um, you know. Um, <laughs> wow. But a psychopath is one of the the dark tetrad. But a psychopath is someone who doesn't feel pain. Right? They're not feeling the pain when they're in when they're in when you when they're inducing pain. They're not feeling any. They empathy don't have anything. No empathy it. whatsoever. A third is being a Machiavellian. So uh, so this is someone who likes to manipulate. So you're manipulating for your own, you know, for your own benefit. Do they stare too? Obsessed with the staring. <laughs> I honestly think I don't. I stare at people. It's okay though. But but it doesn't mean that you're you're any of these. But then last is a sadist, and a, a sadist is someone who derives pleasure out of out of your pain. So you have a sadist, Machiavellian. Uh, you know, you have a psychopath, and you have a narcissist. This is what makes up the dark tetrad. There's only about maybe fifteen percent of society that fits within that. But those numbers are growing, right? It's growing. And those numbers are, or those people are greatest at dating. Because they're manipulative and they don't feel pain. So they can just keep. This is honestly, that is. Just... I'm not good at dating, so I'm not any of them. But long story short is the fact that you, that you feel like you stare. I wouldn't, what I would do is I, and my mm -hmm. question is, is why do you believe that that is an issue for people? I don't, but sometimes I'm just like staring at someone in the eye and then I just think, I do blink. <laughs> okay. But sometimes I just think, maybe I should look at the floor. <laughs> okay, but but why? It's only recently, you know, if someone looks away, I think, oh, I should probably be looking away now. Okay, so I have a couple of thoughts. One is that a lot of these behaviors, staring, even how we hold our body, mm. is cultural in how we were raised. For example, I have Jamaican heritage. You know, you go to, have you been to Kingston, Jamaica? No. All right. That's not a stare. This like kicks and like they get in right. It, really? It's like they're shooting daggers into your soul. When when uh, uh when I first brought my wife to uh, to Jamaica, we were in Florida, yeah, and we were looking at all the terminals, and she was like, "How do you know which one's going to Kingston?" I said, "Look at the people seated at the gate. The ones that look like they're staring daggers, like <laughs> death stares. That plane is going to Kingston, Jamaica. Right? Really? So a lot of it, a lot of it is really? is, is cultural, right, yeah. and behavioral." I what? think maybe my but I my I'm Arabic and I'm just thinking my granddad like he was this close to your face and he stared mm -hmm. <laughs> like they hold eye contact maybe that's a bit to do with it if 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 that that <laughs> definitely that's not a little bit like that's definitely yeah. this is where we pick up our behaviors it's cultural and you're bringing up something really interesting too is that you have that culture but now you're in you're living in what in London, right? Mm. So it's a whole nother set. So then the question is like, how do you show up? Do you do you change your behavior? People call that assimilation. Do you assimilate or do you hold on to how you, how you were brought up? And what I say is hold on to how you were brought up, right? Because that's what makes you so special. I, I, wanna, know, I wanna know a um, other thing. So, uh, okay, we're, we're married, right? And you're married. How do you keep a relationship like it's the first day that you met each other? Yeah. How do you keep that? And it's obviously changes and it moves, but what advice would you give for that? All right. I would say aim for it to be better than the first day. Man. You know? Boy, I want you in my life always. I, know, <laughs> I want you in my life always. Yeah. And, and the reason why we often say we want it to be like the first day is it's part of like this myth. This whole myth of it'll never get better than the first day. So let's just make it like the first day. I've been married for 22 years. Congrats. Wow. Thank you. It's better. It's better than it was day one. Like it's better. That's so amazing. it can be better. So aim for it to be better. When we have higher expectations in life, we get more out of life. When you have higher standards in life, you live a higher quality life. So one is just change your mindset around that. That's one. Secondly is make sure that you two are putting in the quote unquote work. Yes. And what that means is that you have each other, right? So there's, there's three entities in, the, in this marriage. You have each other, 
right? That's one and one, that's two. Yeah. But then you have the relationship in the middle. So you have to spend time nurturing that relationship like it's another person. So you think about, okay, you spend time together, but how much time do you spend on the relationship? Do, like together, like do like do we? We're together a lot, but I don't, yeah. But that doesn't matter. Exactly. That well, doesn't matter. None. I Get out of here. No, you know the answer, honey. What? I think we went to we went we went to a hotel this weekend. Too. That is time together. No, but that's not spending time on the relationship, is it? Well, what were you doing at the hotel? We got there late. We ate dinner and went to sleep. And we got down and dirty. No, we didn't. <laughs> no, <laughs> and then we, we had didn't. separate massages in the morning and drove home. Okay. We're quite. We so, work quite a lot, and then like we're together, but we're like I'm tired. <laughs> Wait, yeah. hang on. No, you're sounding like we're not together. No, we are. But I think the point honey, is... Honey, I love you. I love, <laughs> I love you, you, honey. No, but the point is, is that it's tricky for people to, like, you have to, like, scheduling time to, like, t do you have to talk about but, things? But, but, I'm with you. We're not you, good at you, talking you, about things. You, you, you do want to talk about things. No, we are very good. <laughs> but we so are silent. We are good. But I'm so with you. I think this is such a great thing to, to, to have a conversation around. Couples think... Um, spending time together, spending, that is not spending time together. Exactly. Spending time, time together. together. Yes. That is it. That is where you are just you two. There's no distractions. It's you communicating with each other, whether it's about, I don't know, art or movies or your love or what's happened in your day. Tell me that is really important. And couples don't do that. Couples think spend, watching TV together is spending time together and it's not. And it's not. So, 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 so this, this is the key. Already I could see you two are successful, right? And that success requires energy and work. And so probably by the time you get together, you're like, oh, we are tired. We just want the individual massages and we're gonna fall asleep. But the challenge is you're not spending time on the relationship. So you have to spend time on the relationship, which is everything that you just mentioned. So for example, what as a, as a couple, right? As what goals do you have together? Shared goals, not business goals, but what shared goals do you have as a couple? Family. What, but what do you mean by that? I wanna have children and ah. raise a family together. Ah, okay. We're both agreed on this. I don't know, you just said your answer without even conferring me. No, I'm joking. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Say, you, yeah, yeah, but I, are no, like news no we are, we, are we, we wanna have a family. That's okay. what we want to do. And I have definitely been more hesitant with that. I'm more nervous with that. Okay. But I know what a great mum she's going to be and how much that is going to just complete her life. Okay. So I want to do that for her as well. But you're going to be a great dad, right? Yeah. You have to speak these things into existence. Man. Yeah. You're going to be a great dad. I'm going to be a great dad. So now, if family is so important, what are you doing right now to prepare for that? Trying Loads to buy of sex. a house. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> No, you are definitely not on the same page. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is good. This is good. Is this, this is why you're holding? It could be your <laughs> Love the sex. This is so good. But but so you think about okay, the structure. You're getting the structure, mm. and clearly you, you need to, to to have sex in order mm -hmm. to have uh, children. Or you could do I, my my wife and I did IVF. Mm. Um, so uh, you though that's important. But what's also important is okay. What are the skills? that a parent needs to have. Yes, well, this Devel is so right. Developing those skills. That's something that you can invest in right now, and that's investing in your relationship, and that's also investing back into yourself. I, I, I honestly, I, I'm, I'm not even joking. I could spend Me years too. with you. <laughs> yeah, years. But also you have, because I, I, I want to shout out your book. Thank you. That you have, which um, is called Find Love. Yes. Tell us about it. Yeah, th this is my baby right here. You're holding my baby. Okay, That's I've got my it. baby. Don't worry, I'm holding don't, on tight. Don't, don't drop it. Don't. So, um, it says, how to navigate modern love and discover the right partner for you. Yeah, th so, th so this is basically 10 years uh, in the making. And really what the book is about is, is I believe who we choose as a partner is the most important decision of our life. Why? The reason why, and the research bears this out, is if you choose wisely, if you choose a strong partner, you live longer, you are happier, you make more money, your children are stronger. If you choose weaker, a weak partner, you get the less end of all of those. You don't live as long, you don't make as much money, you're, you're not as happy. I mean, you think about this, if you choose a weak partner, you have so much stress in life, and stress I think is one of our number one enemies. Mm. As a matter of fact, for women, you know, you have autoimmune mm. disease, 80% of 
uh, autoimmune disease is, is women, and it's directly driven uh, from, from stress. And so long story short is who we choose is that important. And so this book is about how do you choose wisely? How do you know if you have chosen wisely, if you're in a partnership? Oh my God, how do you know? There's a, I, I, I've developed a scale. It's called the Long-Term Relationship Satisfaction Scale with two psychologist friends of mine. And it helps, and I would encourage you both to take it. Done. And, and, and the scale will identify the weaker areas of the relationship and the beauty is, is now you know where to focus. Mm. Because a lot of us could be in a relationship and say, ah, you know, my partner doesn't put enough effort, but we don't know what to do. Well, scales and assessments help us to pinpoint what we should focus on. Before we go on, um, sex. Yes. Big topic. Big. Huge. Or, or small, depending. Or small. Does... <laughs> Big or small. <laughs> Big or small. Yeah. How do you uh, keep it alive? Uh are you asking for a friend? Or? Yeah, I'm asking for a friend. <laughs> no problem here, buddy. <laughs> all right, all right. So, so now uh, a couple things here. One is, you know what the number one issue is around why sexual satisfaction in a relationship decreases? Porn. No, it's not yeah. porn. So, a lot of people use porn effectively in their really? marriage. Yeah, a lot of people do that. But you know what it is? It's stress. It is stress. Yeah. And you think about this. If you have high levels of stress, high levels of anxiety, are you interested in physical intimacy? No, not at all. So you have to understand that it is stress is one of the number one, it's the most dangerous thing for a marriage is, is stress. So helping to reduce your stress, mm. and there's a variety of ways that you could do that, but that's, that's number one. Secondly is what drives the highest level of physical intimacy is having the highest level of emotional intimacy. Your sex becomes 10 times better if you can connect with your partner in an emotional way at the highest level. Mm. Also, attachment style falls into this as well, which is kind of wild, right? So, you know, attachment styles, you know, the, the three primary, secure, anxious, and avoidant. Mm -hmm. If you have not earned yourself into a secure style and you are, say, anxious, your sexual satisfaction is lower if you have an anxious attachment style, then a secure. So there's lots of things that play into sexual satisfaction. Paul, that is amazing, honestly. Oh, I've yeah. got a question, I've got a question. Oh, Ben, ben come ben. in, okay. come in, come in here. <laughs> sure. oh, yeah. We have producer Ben here. Oh man. Okay, Ben, come in. Here we go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> grab a seat, Ben, grab a seat. Yeah, grab a seat. Um, my question is, so I've been on Tinder for three years, living in London. Okay. And my apps are dead. Mm. And no one's swiping on me. Oh my gosh. And the people that are coming up aren't really my kind of people either. So what are your top tips oh, ben, on Tinder oh, for a single gay man living in the ben, London? Ben, I'll just change it for you. Can I'll, you? Just, I'll just go into the bathroom. <laughs> Look at Ben getting up. Ben, ben just, just send me your profile and I'll just change it for you. Where's my Tinder? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but but really, can, can I can I look? Yeah, look. please do. This is I'm amazing. taking all the help I can get at the minute. All right, this so is... wow, look at the abs on Ben. Oh my God, <laughs> Ben is out here killing it. And and Paul, you got to be honest. You got to be honest. Okay, so so Ben. All right, so so first thing is is on Tinder too. This is very important. Is uh -huh. that we first question is relationship goals. Yeah. So what are your relationship goals? I want to find a long term partner. I'm okay. ready for love. All right, I like it. So now, how many photos? Because I see one photo of you. Is this this your only photo here? No, I've got a fair few. You've They're been... all of me because I don't know what the rules are when it comes to putting friends in a dating profile. Okay, so there's there's a couple things I would suggest here, Ben. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm just gonna keep it. Hit me. I'm gonna keep it real. Uh -huh. Okay, <laughs> so the photos are very, very important. Yeah. I'd say that's, that's the majority of the decision. Mm -hmm. You want to include at least three to five photos. Most people include one photo. Okay. Now in the three to five photos, you want at least three things in these photos. One is that you need to have a nice photo of the smile. Mm -hmm. Ben, your smi lovely smile. Oh, thank you. No, no like, like <laughs> on the real, I'm not it's even just true, saying that. Yeah, like you have you. a lovely smile. Oh, great. So you, I want to see a photo of you and that lovely smile, uh -huh. okay? Secondly is I need to see a photo of you doing something that you're passionate about. That's very important. Third is I do want a full body shot. 
Okay. Okay. But I want your clothes on though, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. We see the abs. We know you got the abs, Ben. But I but I need you out the bathroom and with clothes on. Okay. Okay. That's very. It makes it sound yeah. like it's such a smutty photo. I promise. No, I'm no, wearing no. clothes. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying. It's you're wearing PG. clothes, but, but you're in the bathroom and the shirt, you know. So You look great. You, no, you. So, so this is the beauty is that you look great. Let this be the icing on the cake after okay. your so partner. Keep this in there, keep, but add another one. Yeah. Let's. Yeah. Yeah. Let's. Let's. Because this doesn't scream long term partner to me. Uh, is it screaming floozy? No, this screams. <laughs> tonight you know, gonna... <laughs> and i'm not a one night stand kind of guy yeah, yeah. No. So, so that's why i say you know if you want this this is cool right okay. but let me see those other photos so three three to five photos very yeah. important second thing i'd say is you do what's called optimize your profile include as many everyone's calling beige flags now mm -hmm. but beige flags what are all the things that make you unique right okay. in your profile yes. right fill that out right make and then last is optimize it from, you know, on Tinder, you can add music, you could do all that stuff. You wanna do that because the algorithms favor you. Mm -hmm. So if you optimize it through the features, yeah. if you include all of your beige flags, okay. if you use the three to five photos that I told you, <laughs> I guarantee you, your hit rate goes up, guarantee. I'm gonna be applying these tips. All right, yeah, there. please, please. Yeah. So and we'll give you an update. All right, <laughs> and we'll give you an update. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, oh my God, I love Paul, that. Great question, Paul. This, great was, question. this was amazing. I, Paul, I want everyone to go and get your book. I really do. I want everyone to go and get it. Here it is, Find Love. Where can we get it? We can get it on your, on your profile, on your Instagram Ev thing. Everywhere. everywhere. Amazon, Waterstones, all the bookstores, yeah. Honestly, that That's was episode, yeah. just, I feel, if I ever get divorced, <laughs> I honestly think we'd make a great couple. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Super. Really appreciate you. it. Thank you. What? What a guy. What an episode. What, what a, a guy. guy. I very rarely, I know I mentioned my eye contact, but like it's because I just could stare at him and listen to him all day long. He's just beautiful inside and out. Yeah, what a kind, kind soul. Yeah. Big thank you for Paul coming on the episode. Um, also, please remember to propose the pod. Um, it doesn't matter if you're proposing it to your your sister, your teacher, your brother, your uncle, whoever it is. Go and propose the podcast to your best friend and send us the voice note, the picture, the way that you did it, and the best ones we're going to read out on the podcast or speak about it on the podcast. Um, thank you so much. And also remember, if you want to send us listeners messages, you can at Newlyweds Podcast on Instagram or Newlyweds at JumpUpProductions.co.uk. Thank you for listening. We love you. We're going to Goodbye. see you next week. If you're getting married. Good luck. If you're getting engaged. Good luck. If you're getting divorced. Good luck. If you're single. Good luck. If you're on Tinder and no one is swiping on you. Go change it and no more naked photos. Ben. Yeah, no more naked photos. Okay, we love you. We'll see you next week. We love you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.